I'm hungry to know my past and my family. I mean, what happened? My name is Neva Wickstrom and uh, I'm 84 years old. Julie Wickstrom, 84. Carol Wickstrom, how old am I? Well, I said I was 85. No. 82? 95. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm over 90. Under 90? 87 or 89. <laughs> you don't know how old I am. How am I supposed to know? You're 89. I'm 89 years old. My, grand, my uh, father uh, came in 1914 and my grandpa came, I think, at the same time. But my grandma and my mom and my Uncle Tony came to Fort Dodge where they settled. My grandpa came when he was 18 and on a, a boat. And my grandma was two months old and came with her family. And somehow they ended up in the same area. Not my mom and dad, but my grandpa and grandmas. And one family is full-blooded Danish on my father's side. And on my mother's side, they were full-blooded Norwegian. I am Italian, and we spoke Italian in our families, and we did not know English. so. We went to a Catholic school, and uh, we there. That's where we learned how to speak English, uh, and it was difficult. So we went to a public school first, and then our monsignor from our school came to knew we were Catholic and came to our house and suggested that we come to a Catholic school, and he provided a bus to pick all of us kids up in that particular area. So we had transportation, but we had to walk almost a half a mile to get to our bus. I wasn't always real comfortable with school because I always felt like we didn't really fit in. So we kind of chummed around with Mexican uh, children because they were kind of shunned also. So it was really clicky. The smart kids stuck around with the smart kids played basketball with the smart kids. So uh, I always felt that I didn't like school because I didn't think anybody was real friendly, you know, but I, as a consequence, I quit in the 11th grade, which, which was dumb. I went to, I went to country school till about seventh grade. And then I told my mom, I'd sure like to go to town school. And so she had a, bu a bus would come, and when they picked up the high school kids, then I, that's when I could go and go in. I started in seventh grade, and I could go into town <laughs> to school. And, and, and the bus came and picked us up every morning. We were about eight miles from town. So you had to ride that bus there and back, unless you had a friend that had a car, which I did not, but. <laughs> Then I was going to go to school in Minneapolis because my mother had a friend, that, her daughter, but she changed her mind. But I went anyway, and uh, it was uh, like a medical assistant. I never finished it because I met your grandpa. I went to high uh, school in Aiken, Minnesota, grade school, uh, high school. Well, after I graduated from that, uh, high school, um, down to the cities. A girl from his hometown moved in with us. You know, I never knew her before. Well, anyway, she had two friends from her hometown, which would be your grandpa and his friend Jack. And that's the first time I met him. He was drunk, and he was sick and from it and he was thrown up out the window <laughs> and I'd never 
you know, because I was a dry state, and that was totally against what I was about. And uh, uh, I, he wanted me to kiss him, you know, at the, and I said, I'm not going to kiss you with your bad breath. <laughs> and he told me to go to hell. <laughs> And I says, I'm not doing that. Goodbye. <laughs> the next time I went with him, he was all dressed up in a suit, and he took me dancing. And he was a gentleman. And it wasn't like the same guy. <laughs> and I thought, what happened to this man? <laughs> and so then we started dating and we got married in about three months' time. So we really weren't together very long before we... Well, unfortunately, divorce is, is part of uh, growing up. And whether it's uh, separation from the original mate or whether it's uh, togetherness afterwards. It was... I guess time for us both to move on. If you do, if you don't want to be with the person you're with and be nice to him, then then it's time for one of them to leave, isn't it? <laughs> and one day he came in and I just says I can't do this anymore and I'm not climbing the mountain and falling down again. When you leave today, you can't come back. He didn't. He didn't come back. Shortly after that, I met my lovely wife, Neva Dorothy Jensen, mm -hmm. who is the love of my life, today, tomorrow, and ever. <laughs> uh, well, we, Bob and I had gotten married, and, and then I got a job at, uh, as a server and the restaurant was called Mickey's Diner, and that's the first time I'd ever been a server, and that's what got me started in my career also. I was, well, I did other jobs also, dry cleaning, working in a dry cleaning shop. I worked four hours at night in dry cleaning, you know, where I handed out the clothes, because every, all men got on an airplane, wore uh, their suits, and flew all over the country. <laughs> That's how they did it back then. <laughs> it was before computers and everything. <laughs> and the wife sat home and got stupid. <laughs> you, the wives weren't working yet, and they stayed home, take care, took care of the children, had the meals on time because he was really important because he was bringing in the, the bread, <laughs> the money. <laughs> But eventually women got so they they were the ones that were going out working full time and they could really hold their own. I became very strong because of all the hurdles I had with Bob. But with Bob, I never knew where I was going to wind up in going out of town, going out of state to look for a rainbow, a pot of gold at the end of the mm -hmm. rainbow. And that's why we traveled so much with the kids. And I was pretty much stuck raising my kids. Kids, I, I really, I always wanted a big family. And I wanted them to have fun and enjoy, enjoy it. And I wanted to teach them to be strong on their own. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted a lot of kids. I, I don't know if I planned six exactly, but I didn't have any help. And, and your grandpa worked at the airlines and went to college. So I was alone a lot. And I thought, I am not going to sit at work and come home and do the same thing all the time. I need to get out a little bit. My husband, first husband, had passed away, and then I met Carol later on. Don't you remember the first time we met? Who? At, at, <laughs> at the uh, singles group? Yes. Remember, and I had yes. my name tag on? Yes. Do you remember what you called me? Nina. Right. <laughs> I said, my name's not Nina, it's Neva. 
Did you tell me that? Yes, I did. And I didn't. I didn't acknowledge that right away. No, you didn't. Well, I, I said I said again now. Okay, Neba. So we chatted a little bit, and he said, "Can I call you?" And I said, "Yes, you can." So that's how it all started. We started going together, and it was it had gotten to the point after when he met my family, and uh, when he came and picked me up at the house. And then it got to be where he wanted, again, he would drive from Burnsville all the way to my house and back again at night. And then it got to be, it got to be where it was almost every night. It's just too much. I said, I need to be home sometime. I said, I've got a lot of work that I have to do. I said, you got to remember, I'm a mother. I'm a grandma, I work all the time. I have a lot of things I have to do. And so he said, okay, I understand, because he was by himself, you know, and I still had family. And so then, but we still saw each other and called each other all the time. And we went together, we went together for three years. We were on our way to go get an engagement ring. And uh, we had a problem. We had some hurdles that we had to work out. I still had a lot of responsibility at my house. I wasn't, I couldn't shirk my responsibilities. So for my job, I was a good worker and always on time and, and with my kids and went through things with my kids. I couldn't neglect seeing, I mean, neglect my family to try to work on a relationship. I just couldn't. You know, if it worked out, it worked out. But I, I couldn't uh, not do what I was responsible for. I couldn't just up and go. And he, he had, was single. He didn't have any responsibility other than going to work all the time. I said, turn the car around, we're going back. I said, we're not ready for this. So we went together maybe another two years and uh, everything worked out good. And, and then when we got married in, on June 27th, everything was okay. And, you know, we got along okay. And we've been married uh, 31 years now. And it's been a very good marriage. Marriage, uh, it's a good thing. Marriage is a good thing, but you have to work at it. Uh. I think marriage is good when you're young and you have your family, but I'd never remarry. <laughs> Mary, family, all of the, most of me can make a close relationship. Uh, I don't know. I've been very fortunate that I've been surrounded by numerous people who've been good for me. Most of my family and I think I have had a pretty long life. Life is what you make out of it. I, t I love life. Oh, the word love is the most beautiful word in the... there is. I think everything's about love. Don't you?